Hey everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be going over the video effects uh, within Premiere Pro and how to and how to use those. Keep in mind that the video effects in Premiere Pro are somewhat limited. If you want to do some serious effect work, you usually have to take it to After Effects. But where uh, Premiere Pro does shine is in uh, the effects that it uses for color grading, the Lumetri color panel, and I'll kind of explain why. But I'll show also a couple of other effects here and, and uh, how to apply them to your videos. First of all, it's probably best to be arranged under the editing or the effect layout. I'm going to go under workspaces here and we're going to go under effects here. And this kind of does a layout that pre prepares you to do effects easily in Premiere Pro. Up here on the side, it has a whole bunch of tabs that have been positioned for applying effects to your clips quickly. And one of those is the Lumetri color panel. I'm going to be going over this in another tutorial in, in the near future. But uh, for now, you, let's just go through the effects tab here. Because this is basically where, this is basically what's happening right here when you use the Lumetri color panel, when you use the essential sounds, is adding these effects to your clip. And let's kind of show you how that works. First of all, if you go to this folder up here, video effects, and you arrow this down, this will show you all the video effects that is embedded in Premiere. There are a lot of these effects in here. You can arrow these down and you'll just see tons of different effects in all these different categories. But where you got to be careful is if you are using higher quality footage, if you're just shooting on a little DSLR or mirrorless camera, especially if it's a more affordable one, chances are you are shooting in 8-bit color, which is not very high quality color. It's high quality enough to edit. Usually those cameras are high enough quality that the image looks really, really good. The clarity, the resolution is there. But if you're going to try to color grade these things, there's not a lot of color depth. So if you get your color wrong when you're shooting, it's not going to correct very well in post-production. But 8-bit but color can look really, really good on the screen. These images here were shot in 8-bit color and they're 4K. So they, they look really good. It's a really nice high quality footage. But like I said, if I try to color grade this, if, if I did the color balancing incorrectly in the camera when I shot this, it will not grade that well. So just keep that in mind. But when it comes to working with a raw footage or what's called 32-bit float point uh, footage, you would have a lot of uh, color data that you can you can correct those things if they were improperly shot. With that being said, one thing that you have to know about all these different effects in here is that most of these do not support 32-bit or raw. And if you have anything that is 10-bit or 16-bit and you add a lot of these effects to it, it's going to downgrade your footage to 8-bit color. So up here in the video effects tab, you will see these three items here. You'll see, first of all, accelerated effect support. You'll know the ancient effects that are inside, left inside of Premiere Pro because it will not have any of these here. They do not support uh, video card rendering, which is real-time rendering. If you add these effects, you have to render your clip. But if they have these accelerated effects feature right here, that means that your video card will real-time play back the effects without happening to render the footage. Next to that, you have the 32-bit color support here. This may means that it will maintain the raw color data. I will not downgrade it to the 8-bit color if you use effects with the 32-bit flow point support uh, added to that effect right there. Like this one has that one right there. And YUV, that deals with uh, graphics mostly. If you're working with graphics that is in a YUV color space, it will maintain that color space rather than convert it to the RGB color space. You'd have to look that up. It's a big explanation. Video is RGB and a lot of graphics are YUV. And when you take the graphics into Premiere Pro, uh, they will be downgrading them to, to the RGB color space. So if they have this little item right there, that'll maintain the YUV uh, color space and will not change it. That one's not as important, but the but especially I think these two are very important, especially when you're working just with a video signal, with a vi video recording. So you can go through these folders and find all these effects, but let, let's add one of these here. And one example of one of the effects inside of Premiere Pro that does not support 32-bit uh, flow point, which a lot of people don't realize, is the warp stabilizer. It's very commonly used in Premiere and in After Effects, but uh, it is supported in After Effects. I'm not sure why they didn't support 32-bit flow point here. So if you're doing color grading inside of Premiere Pro, I would recommend don't use the warp stabilizer. Send it over to After Effects and use it in After Effects, and then you can apply the color inside of Premiere Pro. But let's show one of these effects here. I'm going to grab just kind of random one. Let's grab Mirror. So this mirror one, keep in mind this is, my my footage is 8-bit already that I shot, so I don't care if it has a 32-bit flow point option here. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to drag this down, I'm going to drop it on one of my clips here. Once you've grabbed that and dropped it on one of your clips, that is now added to the clip. Oftentimes these come across as neutral when you add, a, add an effect. If you go up to your effect controls area near your source monitor here, this will show any sort of effects that you've added. These are all the native effects up here that are already added to the clip, and you cannot remove these. You can change them, but you cannot remove these. But here is the one that is added to my clip. So now if I start messing with these parameters here, uh, this, this is a really cheesy effect, and a lot of these yeah, it has this kind of mirror effect you can bring in, so it looks like a reflective water uh, surface. Looks like the surface of like a reflective water uh, below that. So kind of cheesy. 
but yeah, but that, that, that's how you basically work with the effects. You drag and drop them onto the clip, and then you go up to the effect controls, and you can change the nature of the effect here. Uh, you can change the parameters. So I'm going to select that effect and delete it. One that I do find helpful is the blur effect. And if you're looking for a specific effect, you can just go up here and type in the search engine and type in blur. And we'll bring up all the different type of blur effects uh, that you can access down here. Uh, the Gaussian blur is one that I use on, on occasion here. If you drag and drop this onto your clip, you'll notice that it's just added the Gaussian blur to my uh, clip there. And now I can change this here just grab, by grabbing the blurriness and drag it to the right and it will start to make it look like it is out of focus there. Uh, this is kind of helpful in not just destroying your footage and making it look like it's out of focus, but maybe you want to do a transition where it comes into focus. So this is your keyframe area here. This is uh, the beginning of the clip. That's the end of the clip right there. Uh, so you can go over and turn on the keyframing for this. I'm going to turn on my blurriness here, and I'm going to have a, add a keyframe. At this point, it's going to be at 104 um, blurriness level from zero here. Uh, so if I grab this and drag it, it'll get blurrier and blurrier. Uh, but what I can do is I can grab this. Uh, let's say I want this clip to start out in, out of focus and then come in the, and then come into into focus. So I put this keyframe near the beginning of the clip here, and then I'm going to add another one. That may be like three seconds in here. I'm going to play through this and add it about three seconds in, right about there. And I'm going to hit this button right there, and that will add a new keyframe. And at that keyframe. So right now, the first keyframe, I'm going to jump between these by hitting these arrow keys there. It lands on that keyframe, and I'm at 255 uh, blurriness. I'm going to arrow over to this one and put it at zero. Click onto the number, hit zero on my numpad, and hit enter, and it just changed that to zero blurriness. So now it changes from 255 to zero over about those, that three-second period. So now as I play through this, it dissolves from the previous clip into this clip. It's out of focus, and then it comes in focus. So it makes it look like your lens is out of focus, and then it comes in focus. So that's the way the effects work. You can basically drag and drop these. One of the more common ones, and I'm going to show you how to do this in another one doing color grading here, is the Lumetri. That is actually a, a color grade effect that you're adding to your clip. There's a better way than doing this than dragging and dropping. I'm going to collapse all these folders so I can go down and look at the one on the bottom. That is the base color Lumetri effect. These are all color Lumetri effects as well. They're just already like pre-graded looks uh, that you can use. Uh, and there's a better way to choose these, but you can simply drag and drop this onto your, either into your effect controls window right here, and it drops it. So I've got these two effects uh, that are right there. I've got the blur, and then I've got the, the little entry. Or once again, you can drag and drop it to the actual clip, and it will show up in this window. Basically the same thing. So now I've got these features over here. Once again, there's a better way to do this. But now you can start doing color grading with uh, the contrast here. But I just want to show you how these color effects work. That's adding contrast. So I slide that back and forth. Uh, if you want to add a little more saturation of color, you can sort of saturating it a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, you have all this control exposure for, um, you have your uh, uh, exposure slider right there, a whole bunch of little things. But you can see that as my playhead is over the clip, you'll want your playhead over the clip, you'll want the clip selected, and you'll want your uh, effect window, control window open, and then you can uh, change these effects here. Let me grab the blur and make it blurry again. There we go. So you have to have the playhead over the top of it. You have to have your clip selected, and then you can change your attributes over here, and you'll see it re change real time in your program window. If you want to turn these effects off, you can just go up here. You can keep the effect applied, but turn it toggle on and off by just going up to this little effects tab right there. You click on that, and it turns that one off. It's still there, but now you won't see it going blurry uh, as I play through it. So if you turn that back on, there it is. There it is. The effects applied again. Same with the Lumetri. I'm gonna I'm gonna collapse my Gaussian blur here, and here's my Lumetri effect, and I can just turn that off. Turn off the Lumetri effect. That's my color grade, and it is now turned off as well. And I'm seeing the original footage that I shot there. I'm gonna get rid. Of, I'm gonna select this Gaussian blur and just delete it for now. And I want to show you how you can copy and paste effects to other clips. If this is a good color grade and I like this, and my other clips are similar, I can select this color effect right there, and I can hit Command C and copy. And then I can move over to another clip and I can select that and do command V to paste. And that would be control C or control V on a PC. If you're working on a PC on a, on a Mac, it's command C and V to copy and paste. And on a PC is control C and V. And if you want to apply that effect to a whole bunch of clips, like all these clips before that, I can select all these clips on my timeline. And now all I have to do is hit command V and paste it. And it will paste all those things on there. And another thing to consider here is if you do have a whole bunch of different effects on a clip, and if you want to add multiple effects to a clip here, I can go to, let, 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 let's grab the, I've got the one I've searched glow, glow up here and I've got this VR glow. I'm going to grab that and add that. So I've got my Lumetri color grade effect on there. I do have my Lumetri color effect here and I've got the VR glow here. And if we start messing with this effect, you'll see that you get this kind of glowy effect and we can change the parameters. That's kind of crazy there, but there you go. Kind of a subtle glow effect right there. 
Uh, now, if I want to move both this color grade and the VR glow over to another clip, I can select both of these by holding down Command or Control. And uh, so right now I've got the Lumetri selected, hold down Command and hit VR Glow, and now I've got both of them. You can just copy and paste those as well. There's another way to do this is if you want to copy the effects from a clip but not paste everything else to all these other clips, you can, first of all, select your clip, hit Command or Control C to copy it. And now I want to paste just the Lumetri effect to a bunch, not the VR Glow. So if I've got these, uh, let's say I want to apply it to this range of clips right there. Uh, what you can do is you can right click and go up to paste attributes. The shortcut for that is command option V on a PC. It would be control alt V to paste it. So I'm going to do command option V and rather than just paste it right on there, it's going to bring up this window and say, which attributes do you want to apply? And right now I can uncheck motion. If I done some motion effects, I can unplay, I can t to uncheck that. And I just want to apply the little metry color uh, effect to these clips. So I'm going to turn off the VR glow and hit OK and it pastes just that. But once again, if you just want to paste the whole thing on there, like those two effects that I selected, you're going to select the clip that you want to copy the attributes from. But if you want to just simply apply all the effects, you can just select these, you can select these effects here, hold down command or control to select both of them. Do a command C to copy or control C, move it over the range of clips that you want to apply to and do command V and it will paste all those effects on there. Now this has that VR glow on there and has the Lumetri as well. So if I select this clip individually, you can see that those two effects have been applied. Uh, last thing here is if you want to just look at the 32-bit flow point, the 32-bit color supported, uh, you can come up here, you can come up to your effects window here and you can turn on, I just want to say, I want to see only the effects that are accelerated supported. I'm just going to click on this and now it will show, uh, let's turn off the, my search there. Now it will show all the effects that are accelerated effects supported there. You can turn on the 32-bit float point and it will show everything that is supported as far as 32-bit effects and accelerated as well. So let's bring, I'm going to arrow some of these down to show you. So now under the video effects there, here are all my effects that are uh, video card supported and raw footage supported as well. And there's not a whole lot that, that are. So like I said, Premiere Pro has a few useful effects. The most useful effect, in my opinion, is the Lumetri uh, color for doing color grading. In my opinion, a lot of these effects are kind of useless effects or kind of cheesy effects. And if you're ser serious about doing effects, you probably need to be doing it in After Effects. One of these that I found kind of useful is the, the horizontal flip. If you're, if you're going in the right... If you feel like your video, you want it going, uh, the action going in a different direction and there's no text, it's going to be obviously flipped. You can grab this and just drag and drop it onto the clip and it flips it the other way. And this one does not have any attributes to change. It just does a simple horizontal flip. And then if you wish to remove effects from a specific clip or a range of clips, you can, I'm just going to do Command A or Control A. It will select all my footage here. I'm going to right click. If I want to reset everything back to normal, you can go up to remove attributes. It will bring this window open and ask you which effects and which attributes you want to remove. If you want to remove everything, just keep everything checkmarked and this will reset everything back to the way it was when you imported it, hit OK, and it removes them. Or of course you can right click, remove attributes, and you can remove just a specific one. If I want to remove the VR glow off of everything, hit OK. Or you can do that on a specific clip, just right click on that specific clip, say remove attributes, and you can tell what attributes to remove off of that specific clip. So that gives you kind of an idea of how effects work in Premiere Pro. And like I said, I'll be doing an upcoming tutorial on just specifically color grading inside Premiere Pro and how that works. It's a quite a powerful feature. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them.